which will slow that process, but also give us exactly what we wanted here to begin with. There. Probably not the ideal solution, but good enough. Next. Hmm, going back to having only the one. No, yeah, that's mm, slightly disappointing. But not terrible. Well, this one, we can actually modularize by doing these two halves separately and then joining them three times. And to do that... Mm, what about this? Uh, we can convolute the path in order to mm, have what we need in order to bond this three times by using this as the control logic. Uh, now, let's actually see how this works. Oh, uh, that's too slow. There. Now it functions correctly. Mm. Now this is going to be interesting. Joining these two is going to be the the weirdest part. Yeah. So now we have this part, and it's moved to this area, which is what we wanted. We need this to be one in this orientation and one in the opposite orientation just below it. Which is going to be difficult to do. There, and now, because of this, after all of this, we need, we need it to come back around and pick up another one, but in a different way so that it doesn't deposit in, in the same place. First, let's actually examine what the problem would be if we let it continue the way it is currently. You see, this will happen. It'll collide with the last one. Oh, but what if... What if this actually... Yes. <laughs> This could function. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ingenious. And now, to examine the product of this work. This one needs to be slowed. Mm, not by that much, though. There. And now... Observe the product. Oh wait, no. Ah, oh, that's 
bad. Hmm. So now it unconditionally flips instead of unconditionally not. Hmm. Yeah, this is a problem. It'd be so much easier if it wasn't so... Hmm. <laughs> it feels like controlling these is like dialing a number uh, with a... Uh, with a keypad the size of an ant. <laughs> mm. And so the problem then becomes... We don't want this to intercept the second time, only the first time. Think of a solution to this problem. I have a new idea. What if instead of all of this, we had the red one? do the first assembly and the blue one do the second assembly. Like this. There. And so now... The red one can handle this first step, and the blue one can handle the second. Mm. But also... Move this out so I can have this be here. And so this will uh, act as a sort of a... A way for this blue one to become more of a state machine. Yeah. around and held here again and this one will do flipping this one will bond uh, hmm. Hmm. that could be a problem no actually instead of this Going to move all of this up by uh, a few tiles. Mm, like this. And now, from here. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. And now, observe.
Oh. <laughs> now observe. I hope Blue can come back fast enough. Yes, just barely. Now it's done. <laughs> uh, it's possible, just difficult. <laughs> oh, this one, that's weird. Hmm. I have an idea for how this one might work. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, so this one only acts as a rotator, and the red one does the actual placing. Mm, that could be a problem though. I don't think that's a good idea. Hmm. What an awkward shape. <laughs> this would be easy if we had multiple of these reactors, but we only have one in this case. Hmm. In order for this to work, <laughs> this is perplexing. Obviously, at some point, we're going to want this to happen. Yeah, that's that's basic. Also, this. Uh, Another possibility. <laughs> Still don't have conditional branching though, so it'd be very difficult to actually mm, have loops that terminate at a certain point based on something. Currently, this can only be bound twice. Mm. They can bond one, turn it once, then bond another. But then, the only way to put it back in is to form an endless loop somewhere, which would cause problems. of the blue one doing the turning. The red one did the turning. Uh. <laughs> yes, I see now. Mm. What can happen here is So first, let's actually do this part before going any further. 